up. Yeah, what are we doing for tech flow today? Tech flow? Yeah. Oh, I had a sick video idea. Okay. Uh, cool. Networking video. Right. People love them. Yeah. Let's do it. So I want to show you guys today how to configure a simple point-to-point -point link, but first off, but first up guys, a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you guys are in need of an online store, a website, or a domain, all in one platform, Squarespace will get you started. It's the place to go. Links in the description. Right, I need uh, I need some equipment for this. Um, here we go. Let's do this. So guys, today we're going to be showing you how to configure a simple point-to-point -point link using these Ubiquiti products. Now, I actually run a little bit of a WISP, a wireless internet service, where I actually send internet to people's house wirelessly. But you can do anything with, with these dishes. So opening up the box, as you can see, it tells you how to install it, but we're going to go and do this today in practice. Inside the box, you get the dish itself, which has a, well, it's, it's really lightweight. It's just a plastic, little plastic magic box with a spirit level on the back. These will be in the description so you can follow along this video and, and purchase these. In the bottom there is a little cover and these are actually weather resistant so you can put these outside or indoors. All they have in there is a 100-1000 Ethernet adapter cable in there so that is absolutely fine. That is the unit and then in the box simply is the mounting hardware. So this and this will go together to mount onto that unit. And then with that, it comes with a hose clamp so you can put this onto a pole and have it mounted outside or wherever you may wish or you can just put a cable tie around this and have it somewhere. What else we have in the box? Well, there's two items left. A power cable and then a POE injector. Now, pretty much what this is, is a little white box with two ethernet ports in it. You plug one ethernet cable in, which you'll plug into your router, and then the other one will go out to the unit. And what this is gonna do is send the data through the ethernet to the unit, but then also inject power to the unit over the ethernet cable. So all you then have to do is run run cable to the unit, it's powered up and has data. But this will all make sense when we go and set this up in practice. So guys, go ahead and purchase these, come back to this video when you have done, and we're gonna go and install these in real life and get some internet down to my garden shed. But as I've said, with two of these units, you can literally shoot an internet connection as long as you have a line of sight, i.e. nothing in the way, over about 10 kilometers and still get throughput of like 400 megabytes, which is more than pretty much your typical home internet connection. These are really powerful devices. Again, links in the description. Let's go and set these things up and get internet to my shed, or we could even spread it four miles away. So guys, as I've told you already, you can actually use these dishes for real world internet connections like I do selling internet. So if you look out this window right here, you can see one of my client's houses and there, up there on the roof is one of my dishes for my clients. But let's go and set these up and we'll do a demo trying to get internet out to my garden shed. But as I've said, you can use these in any situation where you need internet. So guys, we're going to go through setting up these radios. Now you don't actually put them out into practice, i.e. on the roof, and then set them up. You set them up in a closed environment. Today we are in my kitchen. So we're going to go ahead and set our radio down here. What we're going to go ahead and do is put that into there. And then what we can go ahead and do, guys, is just going to make some noise. Tighten that onto there, and then we have our mounting system installed. Simple as that, and we can clamp this on to a post or anything to get our adjustment. Now in the box we have our power cable and power over ethernet injector, but as you can see down here, I've already got one set up so we can configure the radios. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is plug in our power over ethernet box here, and then run a little ethernet cable from it, plug it into there, and as you can see, our radio will power up. Give it 30 seconds, and then we'll connect to this thing via Wi-Fi on our phone. Right, so it's been about 30 seconds. The unit has now powered up. It's give off a Wi-Fi network as to which I've connected to. I've launched the U-Mobile app, which you can get on the App Store, Google Play Store. I'm gonna click the plus button to discover this device. As you can see guys, the unit has now taken 30 seconds to power on. I've connected to the Wi-Fi network that it's given off and it's displaying me with the unit there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the unit to go in and configure it. Now once we've gone ahead guys and clicked on the radio, it's gonna ask us to accept the licensing. We're gonna go ahead and click continue and now we're into the radio ready to configure it. So there's one way I like to look at this when I'm explaining it to people like you who know nothing about this. So one radio, this one is going to be our master. And this one that's still in the box, which we need to configure, is going to be our slave. 
i.e. this one's going to give off the signal and this one is going to receive it. So once we're into here guys, I'm actually going to show you how to quickly configure these radios. So you can go ahead and buy these radios, go ahead and come back to this video and configure them yourself. So wireless mode for our master, we want to change this to access point point to point. Yeah, these are point to point links and this one is the access point. And then we're going to change the SSID or the name of the network just to tech flow all caps. Doesn't really matter what you call this. But then we're going to give it some security, WPA2, and I'm going to put obviously here just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I suggest you guys do it a little bit more securely. I'm going to put my channel width down to 20 megahertz. And then what I'm going to also do is go down here and we can go ahead and adjust the power of the radio. So this power here, 17, is the maximum power of this radio. This is going to be dependent on how much power and how far the radios are going to be apart. Seeing as these radios are just going to be, well, one on my house and one at one end of my garden at my shed, I can turn the power down. So I've turned the power all the way down just to 5 dBm. And now I'm ready to save these changes. And because Ubiquiti really care about the people that buy these radios, when you click save changes, it's going to ask you just to change the administrator password for the radio so no one can hack you. And now guys, when you've done the wireless settings, there's one more thing we need to configure on our master radio. And for that, we're going to go ahead at the top and click on network and then we're going to click on management network and we're going to change the IP address to 192.168.1.67 and then we're going to go ahead and just click done and then of course click to save these changes radio one our master radio is configured and now which just popped up on my phone after two seconds saying the configuration has changed. That is our master radio configured. So we'll unplug that, set that off to one side and get out our second radio. And we're going to set this one up as our slave radio to receive the signal from our master radio. <laughs> So there we go, we've logged into the second radio with the default username and password UBNT, UBNT for both the username and the password and now we're ready to configure our second radio. So this one for the wireless mode is going to be the station point to point. So the first radio, our master was the access point point to point, this one is going to be the station point to point. And we're going to choose our SSID which we configured on the first radio which was tech Flow. We're going to then choose our security and put the exact same code in, WPA2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, done. Our channel width is set to auto, so I don't need to change that on this radio. And then all I'm going to go ahead and do is turn down the power. As I say, I'm only going to that end of the garden. But these radios are capable of stretching over a good couple of miles. Once we've gone ahead and configured the wireless settings on the wireless tab for our slave radio, you can go ahead and click on the networking tab. And again, we just need to change the IP address to something random. I'm going to choose 85 for this one. Once you've done that, go ahead and click done and then save changes. And now both of our radios are configured and hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, should be able to talk to each other. Let's go and set these things up. So guys, I'm gonna get the radio we first configured, which is gonna go and plug into my main internet connection at the house, and we're gonna send the internet down there to the outhouse. But first, let's go and put this radio upstairs and point it down to there. For that, we're gonna need a nice long ethernet cable. So guys, you know those little PoE injectors that came in the box? What I've gone ahead and done is plugged an ethernet cable into my router that has internet in my house, into the LAN port of the PoE injector, and then I've got this long cable plugged into the PoE side of the PoE injector, which is then supplying the power to this and the data through the one cable. It's a PoE injector. It injects power into the ethernet cable, and what I'm going to suggest is mounting this up properly. Ubiquity make lots of mounts to mount these things up. You can mount them on poles with a cable tie or with the clamp that's included, but just for the demonstration of this video, Video, I'm going to hang it out of my window and just point it down to the outhouse. So 
Now guys, as you can see, we have our dish unprofessionally mounted, and I do not recommend mounting it like that. This is just for demonstrational purposes. I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Here we have this end, our slave dish, the second dish we set up. Gonna go ahead and plug this into this ethernet cable that I have just ran out here, like so. I'm gonna plop on our protective cover. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do guys is cable tie this to this drain pipe right here. This one installed semi-professionally now at least. And then what we can do is use Ubiquiti's genius mounting mechanism here to tighten this up and aim this towards our other dish. And it also has a spirit level on the top to make sure that we get it all nice and level. And there we go, looking all nice and level. So guys, what we've gone ahead and done is ran the other end of our ethernet cable into our PoE injector inside of here. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hook up a router or an access point. For our one, we're gonna use the Amplify from Ubiquiti, total overkill, I know. But any router, we can go ahead and plug into this port here and we will have, hopefully, a very high speed internet connection over our bridge. So guys, as you can see here, we are now in the shed and this is our POE brick. The white cable goes out to our slave unit receiving the signal from the unit at the house. And then this green cable is going over there to our Amplify HD acting as our access point. You could plug this into a laptop, into an access point, into a computer. This whole thing is just acting as a wireless ethernet cable. But what I'm doing here, so I've got an access point, we're gonna connect to this and hopefully get our Wi-Fi down the end of the garden. So guys, I'm now sat outside in the outhouse portion of the house and the outhouse has now an internet connection over our wireless bridge that we've just configured. Let's do a speed test and we've got our access point in there giving off Wi-Fi. Let's do a speed test down the end of the garden and see what it gets. You guys can see this live with me. 11 ping. As you can see, absolutely mental speeds down the end of the garden. That's 125 meg. Oh, and also wait for the upload absolutely manic that's 150 megabytes over our wireless bridge mental so guys that has been our simple point-to-point -point link or a wireless ethernet connection that you could spread internet a couple of meters down to your garden shed or to your garage or even over about 10 kilometers and get internet really really far as long as you've got a line of sight but we want to take a second guys to thank our sponsor today Squarespace I personally use Squarespace for my websites and I think they're absolutely amazing. The one main thing I love about Squarespace is the beautiful designer templates that they offer. And these make making a website super, super simple depending on what product you want to sell or show on your site. The other thing is, it's it's just super simple. It's an all-in-one solution and Squarespace handles everything from actually creating your awesome design with these templates that I've just talked about, all the way to the actual domain, which in some cases can be very, very tricky to set up. So you can actually have your custom domain, i.e. www.techflow.co.uk, and Squarespace will handle all of that in one unique package. If you also have a domain already set up, it's super easy to transfer that over to Squarespace. And they also provide award-winning 24-7 support or if you're having any problems in creating your website or doing your domain or anything to do with websites. So if you're ready to start up your new business or just want to create a site with your own custom domain, we 100% here at Techflow recommend Squarespace. We use them ourselves and they are absolutely awesome. All the links to them are down in the description. And Squarespace, thanks for sponsoring today's episode. So again, guys, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And these have been the Ubiquity Bridges. I'll put these down in the description. They do a whole manner of different bridges, but the setup is the same depending on your needs. These ones, as I've said, numerous times can go up to about 10 kilometers, but they're amazing just for getting an internet connection over a couple of miles, or even just down to your garden shed or garage, or across the road to your neighbor's house. My name's been Alex. This has been Techflow. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.